In this video, I will show you how I design and animate dragons. Dragons are really difficult to animate, guys. It's among the harder things to animate. So just be warned. It's even hard to just draw a dragon, let alone animate a dragon. For one thing, there's no real reference of them other than in animals. So you have to like adapt things that are in animals. And the other thing is they just got complicated anatomy a lot of the time. Recently in this music video that I was commissioned to work on, I had to animate a dragon. So the creative brief for this was that she transforms into a bird, flies off over the clouds and encounters this dragon. It was only 15 seconds, so I had to be very quick with the story delivery. I'm just one guy that was animating this. I had help from my in-betweener, but for the most part, it was just me doing it. And I had to meet my deadline. I could have spent all my time animating the dragon and not left myself time for anything else, you know. I could have gone way over budget and so I needed to make some tactical decisions when it came to animating this dragon and deciding on how this dragon should look. This was the fork in the road at the very start of making this animation where I had to decide what is this dragon going to look like. There are so many different types of dragons. There are dragons with six limbs, there are dragons with two limbs, there are wyverns or wyverns, all types of creatures. Because really, dragons from mythology, I think, are cross between different types of animals. They're kind of a combination between lizards, birds, serpents. Depending on how much influence you take from each of those animal types, you'll get a different dragon. I personally really like serpent dragons, kind of from Chinese mythology. I also think that practically serpent dragons are among the easier ones to animate because they do have limbs but you can actually take away all of the limbs just to focus on the head and the mouth and still have a very appealing dragon and not really have to worry about the limbs but just have the body and have this snaking body and wrapping around, have it coiled up. That being said, animating the long snaking body does carry its own challenges. You have to maintain consistency and thickness and for me this would take a few attempts every time I made a line stroke. In designing a dragon I found that there are two ways you can go really. You can either go sort of Game of Thrones style and go for a realistic dragon where you're actually thinking about the science behind dragons and flight and thinking like how is this actually going to get off the ground and fly or, or whatever it does. And then there's the completely the other side of the spectrum which is magic. You don't have to have things work practically. I'm going to completely ignore the rules of gravity because it's just suspended by anti-gravity magic. That also made things practically a lot easier for me. For me, dragon anatomy, dragon construction, that was a real challenge. I had only drawn dragons a little bit before and a lot of the time those were from a, a distance. This time I wanted to get up close to this dragon. I spent a solid afternoon just searching the searching the internet and it's amazing how many free 3D models you can find where you can just in your web browser turn around these 3D models of dragons. And some of them are really cool, really interesting designs. I created a whole collage, a whole collection of images at certain angles Bits of the dragon anatomy that I really found challenging. I could go into the 3D model previewer and set up that exact angle that I wanted where I was really finding it tricky to, to draw the dragon from that weird angle that I wanted for the storyboard. User uploaded 3D models and they're fantastic, it's an amazing resource. I had loads of pictures of these dragons and I didn't want 
any of them in particular. I wanted something that was kind of my own thing which has existed somewhere in between those designs. Here are some of the sketches that I did uh, before I started animating the dragon and once I'd drawn it and I saw it and I was like, that is what I want. Okay, then I could move forward with the drawing, actually drawing the animation. So one of the things I did for inspiration, of course, was to look at real life. Because of the style of dragon I chose, which has no limbs, I was looking a lot at snakes. I was looking at cobras, rattlesnakes, and I was looking at the way the snake coils up before a strike. It sort of has these loops in it, like, like figure of eight, and then it straightens out to strike. So I've been talking so much about the, the design and figuring out how to draw it instead of the animation process and I think that's because the make or break of animating a dragon lies in your understanding of the design and construction. If you understand the design and construction you can find some good reference material and then making it move is a lot easier from there. So now let's go to the animation itself. Here are the steps I took. I extended out keyframes from the establishing pose I made in the storyboard. I animated the head and the main body first and only afterwards did I add the spine details. The spine was actually very useful in showing the direction of movement for the body and it created quite a menacing look when I added the spines on. I gave the most attention to the head of the dragon since that's where people's attention would be focused. So I made sure that the lines, horns and teeth were consistent enough from keyframe to keyframe. There wasn't enough time to add individual scales, I don't even know how I would do that in frame by frame animation without losing my mind, unless it was some kind of texture. So instead I added these horizontal cross sections which were, I think were adequate for it. And it was these horizontal cross sections that I added motion blur to when it was moving very fast to give the appearance of fast movement. I made colouring quite easy for myself because I chose to have the whole dragon coloured blue and just variations of the same blue and so this meant I was able to automate most of the colouring in TV Paint quite easily and once again I got away with minimal shading. For actually directing the scenes with the dragons, I had certain visions, I had certain ideas kind of from the start. Like I said, I only had about 15 seconds to to actually have all the action play out that was needed, as well as the exposition and things. But I had this vision of the bear kind of tumbling through the air, falling into the dragon's mouth and being rescued just at the right time. That was like the vision that persisted throughout the whole production for me, the bird rescuing the bear and swooping away and just that feeling of uh, escape. I was very inspired by this short film called Leviathan. Oh, this film is so good. Everything about it, the visuals, the atmosphere that it captures, it's so well directed. It's a very simple idea for a short story and it, I think it worked so well. It's a fantastic short film uh, that really inspired me when it came to animating giant creatures like this dragon. And remember, if you want to understand my animation process in clear detail, I've made a PDF workbook called The Animator's Checklist, which you can download for free on animatorguild.com. The link to that will be in the description. If you want to support the making of these videos, you can join me on Patreon and pledge an amount of your choosing. 
I really appreciate anyone who helps me to keep this video series going. Thank you. Yeah, check out the links in the description and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.